The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johns. Hello and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Mary Johns. And I'm Jim Allen. Coming up on today's show, aerial applicators, better known as crop dusters, are a dying breed. Today we'll meet an agricultural pilot to find out what keeps them in the air. It's not about the turns or the fun part at the end or trimming, it's, it's about the job you're doing. Cookies are an American favorite for dessert, and when those cookies also support a good cause, well, that's worth the calories. What we are about is really and truly changing lives and offering second chances to women who haven't always had a second chance. Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants is back at Purcell Farms this week to demonstrate how locally grown food makes its way onto tables in the resort's restaurants. But first today, we'll see what makes this odd house Florence's top tourist attraction. What sustains us? Food, family, faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you, with a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. In the field of architecture, what gets built usually draws more notice than who built it. Nevertheless, many of you have probably heard the name Frank Lloyd Wright. Every year, thousands of people flock to visit the remaining buildings designed by America's most famous architect, one of which calls Florence, Alabama home. Tucked away in a quiet neighborhood in Florence, you'll find maybe the most visited home in the state entertaining more than 7,000 guests every year, the angular L-shaped Rosenbaum house is a top attraction in the Shoals area. We are the most visited uh, tourist site in Florence, one of the top two in, in, in the northwest corner, us and Helen Keller. Helen Keller gets a lot more visitors, but that's Helen Keller. Built in 1940, the Rosenbaum house was a late addition in the career of America's most famous architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. Known for innovative designs such as Pennsylvania's Falling Water or the Guggenheim Museum in New York, Wright's ideas have influenced the field of architecture across the world for decades. Wright's overall style is called organic architecture. And, right, and that's the most important tenet of that is the building itself is to look as if it's always been here or as a natural plant or tree that grew from the ground and was not simply dropped here or placed here. Newly married couples Stanley and Mildred Rosenbaum were gifted the lot overlooking the Tennessee River by Stanley's father, a wealthy owner of several motion picture theaters in the area. Stanley turned to a high school friend and architect for ideas. He presented them with different designs, none of which they cared for, and finally, I would say in a little bit of theatrics, said, that's it, I ha I've had it, I don't think I can design a house for you. Um, let's get an outside architect, to which Stanley and Mildred said, we'll recommend someone. That someone was Frank Lloyd Wright. At this point, Wright's designs had turned toward more space and cost-efficient designs he termed Usonian. Initially, just over 1,500 square feet, the Rosenbaum home is a textbook example of a Usonian home displaying many of the ideas that would strongly influence American home building throughout the 20th century. The Usonian houses were Wright's final iteration or final solution, if you want to use that, that term, to a problem that he perceived, and that was high quality, low cost housing for the 99% of us who don't normally hire an architect. 
Following Wright's organic architecture philosophy, the Rosenbaum House was built with the terrain in mind. Landscaping was kept to a minimum and a combination of brick and cypress were intended to blend the structure into its natural surroundings. Flat roofs were an economical alternative to the steeper variety more popular at the time. Heavy use of windows helped warm the home in the winter months, while large overhangs limited the sunlight during the summer. Inside, the house features small rooms, long hallways, and furniture designed by Wright that would maintain the organic quality throughout the interior. But certain realities about living in the South did cause some adjustments to be made. Mr. Wright didn't like screens. He described them as tacky. Uh, he'd never met an Alabama mosquito. So uh, the family insisted, so we have screens. Frank Lloyd Wright's designs continue to inspire the field of architecture today, and many of his fans tour the home every year. Students, designers, golfers waiting on a tea time, they'll all find a warm welcome at this exceptional little Florence home and Alabama treasure. A lot of people don't know why it's important, but they know that it's unique, that there's not another one. The closest next one is Chattanooga, and it's not open to the public. And so to say, I'm from Florence, Alabama, you know, we have the music industry here, but oh yeah, we have something that nobody expects. We've got a Frank Lloyd Wright house. One of the best things about my day is when someone who has no clue what they're seeing and a wife or a friend or someone tells them to come by and they leave converted. <laughs> They're fans now. <laughs> if you're interested in finding out more about the Rosenbaum House, or if you just want to learn more about Frank Lloyd Wright, visit wrightinalabama.com. And one interesting family tidbit, his son, John Lloyd Wright, is actually the person who invented Lincoln Logs. I wonder how many architects he inspired. There's probably a whole lot of them. Up next, we visit a cookie bakery located between Talladega and Anniston that's helping women get a fresh start. The versatile peanut, meat of the earth, friend of the soil, tasty, nutritious, packed with protein. And Alabama peanut farmers nourish some very special things, families, communities, and Alabama's economy, peanuts, Good for you, good for Alabama. Home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. Starting life over again is a tough challenge for anyone, but getting a fresh start with a drug felony on your record can be nearly impossible. Color Code Cookies was created to employ women in drug rehabilitation programs. While they produce mouth-watering, decadent cookies that'll make you reach for a cup of milk, the hope of getting a second chance is really the sweetest thing to come from this bakery. Making a color code cookie requires the normal ingredients like butter, sugar, and flour. But each one of these cookies is also served with the story of a life transformed. Very rarely do you get off drugs and stay clean. I am almost, I'm a little over a year and a half clean now. Haven't thought about going back. It's like therapy at work, you get to talk about it, any kind of thoughts you have. 
Kelsey is one of five women employed at Color Code Cookies, which is housed in an old barbecue joint in East Aboga. All five bakers have a past that included drug addiction. But the real story of Color Code Cookies is what the future holds for these women. I got a lot more confidence and I don't have no excuses, so I'm gonna go get my GD and I guess I'm gonna keep this job for as long as my life allows me until I can get back, like get my life going. That's what I want. Be able to support me and my kids just by myself, you know, and that's what I want. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have accomplished some of the things I've accomplished. I've actually been able to pay off all my fines so I have no more legal trouble. Um, I've bought a new car, um, and I've recently started back school at Gadsden State. I'm now a freshman. The unique company name is borrowed from the Color Code Program, the state's system for random drug testing of those on probation. I was in Color Code in Jefferson County, Birmingham. So at least once a week I had to drive up there for that, and then sometimes twice if I had court. And not a lot of jobs will understand that. But the people behind Color Code Cookies do understand. What we are about is really and truly changing lives and offering second chances to, to women who, who haven't always had a second chance. It's so much bigger than just a cookie and selling a cookie. It's really, um, it's really about this cause. And, and we have found that when people hear about our story and what we're doing and the lives that it's changing, um, they really rally behind it. Plans are underway to increase distribution, but the cookies are currently available in select gas stations, for fundraisers, and through online sales. Three flavors are available online, oatmeal raisin, M&M chocolate chip, and their best seller, the Red Velvet. The company also produces sugar cookies and regular chocolate chip cookies. These cookies are silly, silly good. They're, they're so good. So um, get one for yourself, get one for your, your friend. Um, they, we have them in, um, they come in a box of 12 cookies. While the calorie count may be a smidge high, customers can feel good about enjoying lots of color code cookies because of the cause they support. A lot of families are affected by addiction. Addiction does not choose a race. It does not choose a social class. It does not choose a gender. Um, it affects so many people in this country. So there is such potential for growth. Um, but right now, what we need is for people to rally behind us and support our cause. So if you see our bright turquoise logo anywhere, you know, grab it and, and tell others about it, share our story. I can tell you what this job has done for me. It has absolutely changed my life 100%, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm a true believer in God, because he brought me through it. He did, and um, just having this job to come to has been a next step in my life that has helped me. When I got sent to rehab, I didn't know that I needed it. When I got this job, I didn't know that I needed it, but I did, and it's been great, a great year. You can find color code cookies at select gas stations, and they are working on other distribution channels. You didn't bring us any back. Well, I had good intentions to, but they didn't quite make it all the way back. They're just too good. I hear you, girl. Yeah, sorry about that. After the break, flying 10 feet off the ground may seem like a thrill ride, but aerial application is serious business. There's more Simply Southern to come. One out of four Alabama residents have benefited from the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Last year, Master Gardener Managed Gardens donated $150,000 worth of fruits and vegetables to food banks and over 25,000 young people developed math, science, technology, and engineering skills through 4-H. Now what we want to know is, how can we help you? Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. 
Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. Being a catfish farmer to me means carrying on a legacy that my father started about 35 years ago. It's a good way to take care of the land and provide a nutritious product for people all over the world. My name is Mary Quitman Holmes. My sister, my father, and I own this farm, Lawson Catfish Farm, in Perry County, Alabama. Aerial applicators, you may call them crop dusters, help farmers by delivering crop protection materials, or sometimes seeds, to fields. Although they're an important tool for many farmers, there are fewer agricultural pilots today than ever before, as Kevin Worthington tells us. What's 10 feet off the ground and goes nearly 150 miles per hour? Whoa. You might call it a crop duster or an agricultural aviator, but the proper term is aerial applicator. You see a lot of different, uh, from mosquito control to, you know, uh, farmland spraying, pasture land spraying, as I mentioned, fires. So it's, it's developed a lot far, further than where we started from the dusting age. Growing up on his dad's cotton farm, Gentry Smith's aviation career started when he was just a teenager. Halfway through his college studies, Gentry was hired to help the pilot that flew over his father's crops. He says over the last quarter of a century, he's seen a lot of changes in the industry he loves. There were 13 airplanes that, spray planes that worked every day in the same area that I cover now. Um, we were having trouble with the tobacco budworm and the uh, boll weevils. Um, once the boll weevils were eradicated, um, the need for the aerial applicator changed where he, our services weren't needed like they were before. He says many older pilots went out of business as the need for aerial applicators waned. With few new pilots coming in to take their place, the area he had to cover expanded. When I started, if we flew farther than 10 miles, we were upset. I was like, you know, we can't make any money doing this, going, you know, 10 miles, are you kidding me? But now, with, with the, you know, with the turbine airplanes where they're faster, you know, we can haul a larger load. So we're cutting um, loads out because we're um, larger airplanes. So where before we might haul 200, 250 gallons, now we're 450, 500 gallons. While the maneuvers Gentry performs may look thrilling to some people and frightening to others, he says his number one priority every time he gets in that cockpit is safety. The more experience you get, you know, the, hopefully the smarter you get. Um, it's, it's, it's all about the job you're doing. It's not about the turns or the fun part at the end or trimming it's it's about the job you're doing and that's the hardest thing for a new person to to learn is they're like oh this is great you know I can do now it's it's safety first of utmost safety first Gentry says the profession is safer now than it's ever been but there'll always be a risk he's had some close calls himself but says the key is knowing your limitations a few years ago, I've been flying for a month. It's that, you know, every day you lose track of your days. And I brush a, a tree, no damage, right? Next day, I do the same thing. I'm going, what's going on here? I come back, I tell my loader I'm done for the day. I, I realized that I, I, was be, I was fatigued and I needed to stop. It really didn't matter how much work I had on the books because if I tear an airplane up or an injured or whatever, it doesn't matter. Gentry says the rewards the job offers far outweigh the risks, and he couldn't imagine doing anything else for a living. Agriculture, aviation, I mean, 26 years of doing it, it's been, it's been very good to me. Um, I never would have thought that, you know, a job flying an airplane, would have, and, and not just monetary, but you know, the, the sense of accomplishment.
for Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. The Smiths are really a, a high-flying family. Yeah, Gentry's daughter and son are trained pilots. And you might remember Reed. We featured him last season as he was getting his pilot's license. We did that. Sidney Phelps of Bonnie Plants is up next. He's at Purcell Farms in Talladega County again this week to show you how their homegrown food winds up on the plate in their resort's restaurants. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. What we eat, what we wear, it all starts somewhere. And if it's good, it usually starts with a farmer. And that somewhere is right here in Alabama. In a field, in a barn, on a tractor. Right now, there's a farmer starting something good for all of us. And it all starts right here in Alabama. FFA makes a positive difference in the lives of students by developing their potential for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. We're strengthening American agriculture and providing our members with the skills needed to build healthy local communities, a strong nation, and a sustainable world. We are the next generation of agriculture. It's our turn now. Let's show the world what we can achieve together. We are FFA. For more Simply Southern, be sure to follow us on social media. And while you're online, visit our website, simplysoutherntv.net. Simply Southern will continue in a moment. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is, it's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center, Bonnie Plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. We're back at Purcell Farms in Sylacauga, Alabama. And today we are in the Chef and we're joined by Chef Andrea. Uh, Chef, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, we talked with John about all the different things in the garden and we wanted to see how you guys incorporated uh, you know, the, the farm to fork aspect here at the farm. So give us a little bit of background about uh, your kitchen and your staff and, and how everything works around here. All right, well right now you're standing in the brand new kitchen, which is um, very exciting for all of us here. We're getting ready to open the two new restaurants and we can't wait to get in here to cook in here. We have the other kitchen, the clubhouse, which is where we currently cook out of and our menu there changes every day. So depending upon what John brings from the garden, we turn it into something and put a new item on the menu. Uh, breakfast and lunch, we incorporate a lot of our pig products. So we have our own, we raise our own pigs on property. Right. So we have our own breakfast sausage. We have uh, country fried pork chops that we use on the menu. We also use the lard from the, rendered lard from the pigs to make our biscuits for breakfast. Uh, for lunch, we use tons of items, all the garden okra that we can find, sometimes a little bit more okra than we'd like to have, but yeah. we have crispy fried okra fries, we have eggplant fries on the menu now, uh, buffalo fried uh, cauliflower, we do an array of different coleslaws with all the cabbage and stuff, and of course now the huge trend is kale, so right. lots of kale You've got kale salads. here today, so yes. the mm -hmm. dish that we're, uh, you're going to prepare today for us, give us a little bit of background on that, if you, we need to start, uh, whatever we've got, um, we're, I know we're using quail. Correct. So uh, tell us a little bit about the dish we've got today. All right, so we're going to do a pan fried quail okay. with a little bit of McEwen and Sons grits. Okay. So we use their grits for every dish that we pretty much use grits on. So for breakfast it's used. We have blue grits on all of our weddings. They have blue cornmeal grits that we use. For our shrimp and grits we use their grits as well and they have cornmeal and other products. So we'll be doing a creamy uh, yellow grit okay. on the dish. And then we're using some of our garden kale. We took it and we're going to do a little crispy fried garden kale garnish. Okay. Our uh, farm fresh honey, because we do our, we have our own bees and stuff on property that we have our own honey that we also jar and label for resale. 
So we'll come back here and yeah. we'll get a couple of the items. Sure. So the grits are locally sourced. Grits um, locally sourced. The the gravy that you're doing is using the pork from the pigs that are, that are that are you know raised here on the farm, uh, and then all the different goodies from there. So yeah. Let you go so ahead we're gonna go ahead and plate. So this is one of the dishes that you'll find regularly on the menu at the clubhouse right now. Okay. Um, we just do the little swag of the grits. And will this transition into uh, the new restaurant as well um, as the... This is one that's been uh, very popular. Everyone seems to enjoy it. They really like the fact that we've got as many local items as we do on right. the menu. So we keep it. They ask for it. If I try to take it off the menu once or twice, they come back and ask. So I figure I might as well go ahead and just keep that's it on. That's right. And there's the quail. And there's your quail. And you're going to put it on here. Okay. Yeah. Just put it right over top of the gravy. Correct. So the, the, the kale, you actually deep fried the kale. Correct. We're going to drizzle the quail with just a little bit of honey to from the To add the, the sweetness. Farm. Get a little sweetness from it because it's, you know, slightly gamey. We dredge in a little bit of seasoned flour before we pan sear it. So just putting a little honey on it to sweeten it up. And then you're just going to garnish your dish with a couple of pieces of the kale. And the fried quail is going to... Uh, the fried kale is going to add that little bit of crispness for right. the skin. Because we didn't um, crispy fry it, so we decided that if we were going to just pan sear the quail, that we needed a little bit of crunch to help balance out that dish. So you have the creaminess of the grits, the creaminess from the sausage gravy, and then the crispness from that kale. Chef, thank you so much for being with us. Folks, if you want to find out more about Purcell Farms and all they have to offer here, go to PurcellFarms.com and check them out. Of course, you can also go to BonniePlants.com for additional gardening information. If you have a question for Sydney, drop him an email at simplysouthern at alafarm.com and he may answer it on an upcoming show. That'll wrap up another edition of Simply Southern. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll be back with us next week when we'll visit a unique youth sports team bringing national honors home to Alabama. And we'll have a foot stomping good time at the Old Time Fiddlers Convention at Athens State University. I'm Mary Johns. And I'm Jim Allen. We'll see you again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.